We're here with uh, Adri Pfeffer uh, from Persway. Tell us a little bit about what Persway does. So Persway was uh, founded with a mission to bridge the gap between how companies market and how people buy. And people buy basically by listening to their friends and family, and companies market primarily by broadcasting. So companies today, Raj, uh, uh, consumers with marketing communication that to a large extent is irrelevant to them. There's a force of research just out that the level of attentiveness to marketing communication is, is down to about 14%. So what we're able to do is we're basically, for operators, we're able to take their raw data of the, their consumer transactions and then identify who within their customer base are influencers and who are their followers by subject. And then help those organizations really convert more influencers and turn them into advocates for their brand. So uh, that has a major effect on churn prevention, on value-added service take-up. And really what, what our customers find is they can use this as a strategic tool to uh, uh, go back into the market with something new and a new way and a new approach to reach more consumers. So what, what does that mean? I'll give you an example. So one of our customers, a large European uh, operator, was uh, focused on introducing data services into their customer base and reaching the uh, uh, very prevalent ceiling of that pen data penetration. And he couldn't really know what to do to get more consumers to, to get into data services. So what they did is they targeted, we identified influencers for them. We targeted those influencers together. And then our software identified those influencers, and then our marketing consulting helped them really capture more influencers. And for every influencer that we captured, three and a half followers also took up the same data bundle. So explain to me briefly, what is it, who is an influencer? So 10% of the populations are influencers. These are everyday people that everybody listens to. So if I want to buy a new uh, handset, I have a friend that knows about gadgets, and I can ask her about that gadget and, and, and get an, an honest, unbiased opinion. If I want to ask uh, somebody else about data services, I may ask another friend who knows more about price plans and data services and so forth. So these are everyday people that influence my decision to buy. And how do you find those people and identify them as influencers, and then you know, how do you use them for your mobile marketing? So our software basically takes the data from the mobile operator and maps out the influencers by behavior. It's not about who talks the most. Actually, you're honest, the, the people who talk the most are typically taxi drivers and not real influencers. Uh, it's not about who uh, communicates the most. So uh, um, uh, I talk to uh, uh, my mother, my mother once every week, and she has no influence over me, and I have no influence over her. Um, and for example, the, the influencers typically the more quiet people in the room. The people who, when they talk, people listen, and they know what they're talking about. So those are the influencers, and the way we find them is we actually track their behavior and track their followers' behavior and see real effect. So if you would buy an iPhone and then we would see five people around you the next week buy an iPhone, there's a likelihood that you're an influencer, but it goes well, way deeper than just that. And so when we convince the influencers, and going back to the case study, we convinced an influencer, three and a half followers took the data services, but I think one of the more interesting issues is 35% of the followers have never reacted to any marketing communication from the organization. So the only way really to reach those people is through the influencers. And we have had the opportunity to, to do this over and over again. We've already mapped more than 200 million uh, consumers worldwide in various verticals, not just telco, we operate in retail and finance as well. And some of our customers, and you can go to our website and, and see what our customers are saying, uh, uh, customers like Vodafone, T-Mobile, France.com, 
and more. And we're seeing substantial results uh, as a result of using our technology. And how do you, how do you operators reach out to these influencers, and how do they, I mean, how do they interact with them? Fantastic questions, because influencers are harder to convince than everyday customers. So no, but no influencer is going to put their personal credibility on the line for any brand or any uh, product unless they truly believe in it. And so uh, the way to convince influencers is different than just offering them stuff for free. So, for example, you can uh, uh, give an influencer a handset for free, and they still wouldn't recommend it. But really, the way to convince influencers above uh, creating good product is really connect to them in a very respectful way, respectful of their time, and convince them in a way that they become passionate about the product and advocate it. And we have a set of best practices of how to do that uh, when we engage, and it's different from customer to customer. Can you tell me a little bit about the challenges and the problems with um, ARPU uh, measurements today? The challenges with ARPU measurements? Yeah. In what sense? Uh, in the sense of the fact that there are challenges. <laughs> so, so what we're seeing uh, from a very global perspective, we're seeing voice EBITDAs go down. Mm -hmm. And all the mobile operators that we talk to are very fearful of becoming what we call a dumb pipe. Right. A dumb pipe. And then they're trying to uh, uh, introduce more data, uh, data services and value-added services to increase their ARPU. And what they find, it's really a promiscuous market. Yep. And uh, Google, Microsoft, and many other small and large players are eating away at that ARPU, at that data ARPU, uh, and, and, and really create a huge challenge for these mobile operators. The way we come in to that particular uh, problem is we enable the operator to use their competitive advantage, which is their data assets, right. as a way to really reintroduce new things into their customer base in a new way that allows them to compete better with a, basically a promiscuous market. Okay. Thanks very much for explaining that to us. And uh, good luck. Thank you.